It's Clark, Clark and Perry on the case. Ja, na, na, na. Clark and Perry do what it takes. Ja, na, na, na. Clark and Perry investigate. The activities and interests of local artists in the Windy City's finest throughout both Lethbridge and Medicine Hat, Alberta. Available on Telus, Optic TV, On Demand, Bidflex, YouTube, and more for limited time only. Terms and conditions apply. Ja, na, na, na. Well, in contrast to that, what can you use less of in your life? There's just less things going on. <laughs> <laughs> just... So you can have more time. <laughs> yeah, so I can have more time. Yeah. That's very good. Yeah, pretty much. Um, well, in that case, one of the other questions that I have for more foundational, just so that our investigators have a little bit more to go off of with you, is uh, what are three things that you would be grateful for? So I would say my friends, my family, and my dog. <laughs> That's lovely. Yeah. So everybody, um, you know, my chosen family and my, my, my biological family, like they're all wonderful. Mm -hmm. And I'm just really grateful for for the people in my life yeah. and um and yeah also getting a dog like completely like it's one of the it's one of the smartest things i've ever done yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> completely changed the the mood in the household yeah so what's your dog's name becky becky yeah she has a, a person's name uh, as, yeah. as they as i would debate they all do <laughs> yeah yeah but uh oh that's lovely uh, so what do they help out um so I'm uh, so for my friends and family, I, I think, well, all of us, not just me in particular, we're I think everyone's a little bit more higher maintenance than they think. Mm. You know, we need a lot of like we need community, we need social interaction. Yeah. Um, but the right amount for each yeah. person. Right. Yep. You know, I uh, just, you know, having like the live in boyfriend and my roommate in that it just helps me um, to not really go feral. <laughs> you know <laughs> i imagine that could be pretty easy if you encounter yes. some burnout or something like that yeah so. um you know and gentle reminders of like oh hey i made some food are you hungry it's like oh yes yeah i forgot to eat or <laughs> yeah yeah and um you know the uh, the dog kind of keeps me keeps me humble mm -hmm. and keeps me on task because i have to attend to her needs mm -hmm. like they're not you know, she'll be very intrusive if I don't. And I'm responsible for her, right? I, yeah. I have to, like I signed up for that. Yeah. So she, it's, you know, she doesn't care that I have to get up and go to work. Um, well, she does care in the sense that she doesn't want me to go. Yeah. Uh, she doesn't care that, you know, I'm busy. I have all this other stuff. She's like, no, I need to go for a walk. So mm. that's what we're doing. Yeah, <laughs> right? yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so she kind of helps me, um, it's like, well, I, I have to take care of Becky. I have to take her for a walk at this time. So that means this stuff, I need to finish it up around this time. Yep. And then I can go take care of her. They, they keep you accountable. Yes. As well, too, yes. right? No, that's that's very interesting. So this kind of, so bringing it back to more acrylic painting as well, too. Mm -hmm. So I, I'd imagine even with Becky, there are some times you maybe don't want to go for a walk, but you have to because yep. that keeps you accountable and mm -hmm. that obligation as well, too. Have there been times or experiences that you don't want to paint? Oh that yeah, you still painted. Um, yeah, if uh, if I accept a commission, and if I do it when I'll feel like it, and only when I feel like doing it, it's going to take me one to two business years. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. That that would take some time. I literally make myself an appointment. I'm like on this date on like Saturday, mm -hmm. I'm going to, I'm going to get this commission done, get it out the door. And why is that important? Uh, just because I don't want to, especially if someone's giving me money, like I know how like hard I work for, for money and how hard everyone mm -hmm. works for their money. And they've chosen, to give me money for something that they think is pretty to look at yeah. and it serves no other function mm -hmm. then i i want to get it done yeah right i want to be um, i want to hold myself to that professional standard of trying to get it done mm -hmm. so yeah no yeah. that's very interesting so obviously even when it comes to like commissions and everything else that's going on in your life i can imagine that there are sometimes you do experience burnout or Mm -hmm. or maybe things get a little too stressful or something. Um, so my question is, how do you cope when things get a little tough? I'm a big fan of digging holes. <laughs> Hear me out. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> is actually science behind it. Uh, all right. If you dig a hole really aggressively, it tricks your limbic system into thinking that you got in a fight and that you won. <laughs> Wait. Yep. Wait. Oh. So <laughs> You, you didn't mean like metaphorically digging a hole. Literally, Literally digging a hole. Digging a hole. Literally digging holes. And it makes your brain think you got into a fight. And you won. And you won. Because you're physically like attacking something. The and earth. And it obviously can't get you back. <laughs> unless you trip on the shovel or whatever, I guess. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, you, uh, yeah, your body thinks you got in a fight and that you were victorious. Wow. <laughs> it's that's... super effective. I never would have thought of that. Yeah, because before sometimes I would use exercise, but not like crazy amounts. Like I, I, I'm not a fan of exercising, right? But yeah. it's like, okay, I need to make myself physically tired so I'm not stressing about this thing and you know, I just go to bed. Yeah. So I'd run until I felt like maybe a little nauseous, which didn't take very long. But still, that's <laughs> not a healthy, healthy coping mechanism. And if you have holes that need to be dug, like if there's creeping bellflower in my lawn, which there is, mm. the roots are like a foot down mm -hmm. and you're pulling out like carrots, like these, like the roots can be as thick as my thumbs Yeah, and they're down there. And if you really want to not spend the next 10 to 15 years weeding the leaves of your lawn, yeah, um, you got to try to dig them out. Yeah. So... That's wow. So that's you, what I did over a couple summers is I dug like tremendous holes in the lawn. That's insane. Yeah. I, as in like in, in a good way as yeah. well too. I never would have thought that that would be some, but it makes so much sense too. You yeah. Know? And I just, I, um, I just, I, I didn't really clue in until I, I was like, man, I gotta get this creeping bellflower out of the lawn. And I dug a hole and I felt great. Yeah. <laughs> Because you won. You beat that bellflower. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and if I can't, so if it's winter or something, sure, you could, you know, maybe shovel the snow. I, yeah. Or um, I'll like, uh, I like to write out my thoughts if I, if I'm, you know, all aboard the crazy train and kind of like ruminating over something, I'll write it out and I'll be like, is this true? Mm -hmm. Are my feelings like, you know, okay, everyone's feelings are valid, but are they? <laughs> you know, is like, is your reaction an actual reflection yeah. of reality? Yeah. You know, um, so I like kind of writing it out and uh, whatever's bothering me and maybe arguing against it or just trying to, um, I find even just the act of writing it down just kind of gets it out of my head and mm -hmm. then the thoughts can be exposed to like maybe a little bit of sunlight and oxygen and I can see if they can withstand exposure to sunlight and oxygen or so mm -hmm. the same, you know, talking out with a friend, a trusted friend also works too, hmm. you know. That's very interesting because like we've talked about two sessions where you've achieved Zen and that mm -hmm. for us is pretty relaxing as well too, but mm -hmm. then obviously to cope when things get tough we've we've now just found two different strategies as well too. yes digging holes and and all that do you do you make sure to keep these things separate from one another um, um actually yes because i've noticed that if like so your mood and your thoughts just colors everything you do it influences course. you know like maybe if i was in a bad mood today i would have worn all black or mm -hmm. something right mm -hmm. um so I try to, especially if I'm going to be painting something that's for somebody else, and most of what I paint is going to end up being for somebody else because I'm probably not interested in keeping it. Yeah. Um, that will affect the composition. That will affect the subject I choose. That will affect the colors that I choose. It might even affect how much pressure I put on the canvas or on the brush. It can affect all of that. Mm -hmm. So if I'm in a salty enough mood or a spicy enough mood, yeah. I actually try to deal with that and then avoid painting. I almost think that maybe the meditative Zen of painting is more of a maintenance kind of tool of or process than actually solving problems. Mm -hmm. So that's very interesting mm -hmm. and 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 very good, especially when you're doing something like a commission or you're trying to present oh, yeah. this. You want to make sure that you you have like the clearest head possible yep. when uh, when trying to achieve that zen as well too. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's very interesting. Um, 
So an another thing I kind of wanted to touch on as well, too. So you mentioned that uh, your artistic story began in Nova Scotia. So mm -hmm. we know who, who was your early positive influence that brought you into that. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm kind of curious a little bit about Nova Scotia itself. Um, mm -hmm. How did you feel about the place that you grew up in? So I, we moved, my family moved away when I was 10 years old. Mm -hmm. And I've been in Alberta since. Mm -hmm. So, and it's a beautiful place. It's wonderful to visit. I could never live there again. No. Uh, no, absolutely not. I'm more culturally, I guess, Albertan now. Yeah. And uh, so last summer, I actually brought my boyfriend, my partner to Nova Scotia. I'm like, here's all my extended family. Mm -hmm. This is where I grew up. We went and saw, you know, the, the beaches I used to go to when I was a child. And um, we stayed with my Aunt Jeannie and Uncle Kenny. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, yeah, like, this is it. And the way that, you know, people respect your time is very different. Like, if you don't make that small talk in Nova Scotia, that is very, very rude, right? Oh. People will be asking you, oh, you know, do you have, like, do you have kids? Or, you know, do you have your family? Or, like, where are you from? And, like, all this stuff. And you're just, like, at the cashier at the grocery store or something, right? And in Alberta, I've seen people in the drive through like kind of coast their car by and like tap their card and then coast their hand by and grab their coffee. Cause like you're in the drive through for a reason. You're not there to chit chat. You want to get your stuff. You want to go and go yeah. to work. Um, so there's that very different perception of that. And mm -hmm. kind of the catchphrase for the, for the trip was uh, just sketchy Cape Breton stuff. <laughs> just <laughs> like this, this would never fly in Alberta, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, like putting gas in your car or in your truck while it's still running because your starter's bad and it might not start again oh if you goodness. shut it. Yeah. That's just an East Coast thing. I, I sympathize because I'm from New Brunswick as well, too. Yeah. So, like, I, I did the same story. I brought my partner out and, and, we, <laughs> and we took them out uh, to uh, New Brunswick as well, too. But I don't know. It's just... It's a smaller population over there, yeah. so I imagine it's very small towny the entire time. The whole is, place is small towny, yeah. and it's one of the oldest, like colonized or settled parts mm -hmm. of Canada. So, you know, like I was able to um, take Corey and be like, "These are my great great grandparents or my great grandparents' graves," mm -hmm. and you know, did a little maintenance on them. And it's like, and my grandma used to live up the street yep. from here, and. So it's just like hundreds of years of everybody knowing your business for generations. And I think it's could be similar as well in like rural communities and that in Alberta and Western Canada as well. Of course. But it's, um, yeah, it's different. But that it's a very interesting thing that you mentioned. It's, it's rude mm -hmm. if you don't keep up the small talk. Oh, right? it's so rude. Yeah. It's like, what, you ain't got time for me? Yeah. Like, where are you off to that's so busy and important? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. It's very interesting. Yeah. Well, so so you moved quite early when you were 10. Mm -hmm. um, and so you've had probably about three years of, you know, artistry experience now under your belt as well, too. So I guess more specifically, um, do you find any inspiration that comes from Nova Scotia or comes more specifically here in Alberta and Lethbridge when it comes to your acrylic art? Um, I probably started getting into um, painting oceans and ocean sunsets on beaches, even though a lot of like my first ones were all kind of in a tropical setting. The very seed of that idea is probably, you know, from being from Nova Scotia. Mm -hmm. And I did do a lot of um, sketches of the ocean. So a lot of big, broad, flat horizons and lots of bold transitions of color. Yeah. Um, you know, the odd lighthouse here and there. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Obviously, yeah, of <laughs> <A> course. <staple. laughs> yeah. Um, but it was more influenced by, like, the subjects I would paint were more influenced by um, kind of the environment around me. So, for example, like, I lived in Grand Cache, and then we moved to Fort McMurray, and that's Boreal Forest, like Rockies, Boreal Forest. Mm -hmm. And then when I moved to Lethbridge in 2011, for literally the first few years I was here, I think all I painted was kind of like a, a light sky kind of background with a silhouette of coniferous trees in front because they weren't taking, they were gone. No, no, it's right? the badlands. It's just, it's right? just ba like bald prairie. Yeah. Right? Which is beautiful in its own way, but it's something I missed. So I just ended up painting like 
coniferous tree silhouettes for literally a few years because there just mm -hmm. weren't any and I missed it. Yeah. So. so, and a lot of your work sounds like it is centered around landscape and all that mm -hmm. such as well too, which comes with a variety of inspirations when you're going outside and doing all that. Mm -hmm. um, would you say that's your, your primary or maybe even only um, um, view of, what am I trying to say here? <laughs> like painting or yeah, is like that the, practice? Is that the only style or portraits that you do? Or do you do portraits of people or anything like that um, as well too? That's what I'm trying to ask. Uh, I think in late high school and shortly after high school, I did dabble in doing sketches of people, mm -hmm. but then I, I lost interest and I stopped and now I, I probably couldn't do it. I would have to work at it for a really long mm -hmm. time to be able to do that again. Yeah. And, um, and if that doesn't happen to interest me, then I'm like, I'm not going to do it. Yeah. Right. No, of course. Um, but yeah, so landscapes primarily for the bulk, I would say probably the first two thirds of it was my primary kind mm -hmm. of focus. I just did a lot of landscapes. Um, I didn't really delve into painting like animals or people or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And it's only been, yeah, <clears throat> I would say in the past, uh, maybe like six or seven years, I mm -hmm. would say I've actually gone into like other things. Cause even when I started with like the, the space series, the new general catalog series, yeah. I got started with a Milky Way series before that. So yeah. it was Milky Way with, you know, trees and different landscapes or mountains silhouetted in the front mm -hmm. um, or in the foreground. And that was inspired by um, amateur photographers' uh, photos of the night sky. Yeah. Yeah. And I, you know, uh, followed a bunch of accounts on social media for that. And um I was like, I wonder if I could paint that. So I just yeah. started doing that. And then it kind of eventually evolved into just straight up space. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of, uh, but yeah, I would say for the vast majority of it, it's been landscapes. And yeah, natural landscapes, scenes. scenic painting, all yeah. that such as well too. So that's very interesting. I, like you, you were inspired because we're about to workshop this mm -hmm. here in the next little bit as well too, which I'm super excited about. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be focusing more on space. Do you mind like... So what kind of brought you to more space exploration of painting? And did that kind of have something to do with the abstract journey that you were on as well too? Or was well, it just something you stumbled upon? I think it had to do with, um, I realized that there's transferable skill sets with painting that I could easily, like if you could paint clouds, mm -hmm. you can paint a nebula. Like, yeah, actually. Easy peasy. <laughs> I right it is that. it's a hundred percent like you just use different colors yeah and a different arrangement but yeah if you can paint clouds which i could because of all my years of painting landscapes then you can absolutely paint space wow and it just sort of naturally kind of came together like that and also i saw that um I had the idea, so I have like the, the new general catalog series. It is derivative of photographs or like satellite uh, or telescope, sorry, images of space. Mm -hmm. And I like the idea of, you know, just a human being translating this um, artificially generated image and just, you know, just physically applying paint to canvas to, to make something that looks like that. I think it kind of humanizes it and mm -hmm. kind of brings it a little bit more down to earth. Yeah. When just you translate it from that original medium to the painting. Yeah. Yeah. And also the technical challenge of it as well is something. It's like, I'm pretty sure I can paint that, but can I? And mm. yeah. So this might be a little bit more controversial as well mm -hmm. too, but like AI is mm -hmm. developing and creating all these, well, fantastic images as well too. Mm -hmm. What would be your opinion on what its development is and what its involvement might, mm -hmm. might be? I think like any tool, it has the potential for great good and also great evil. Mm -hmm. um, I think that some of the open source AI uh, that's been developed that has used, um, is use artists work without their permission mm -hmm. to train the AI. I think that is reprehens reprehensible. I think you need permission and you need to compensate people for their work. Yeah. Right. It, in all things, compensate people for their work. Mm -hmm. So like if I commission Beck 
for, you know, uh, they do pet portraits. And I've, I think I've gotten like three of them for, you know, gifts for my family members. Mm-hmm. Um, I pay them their full going rate plus tips, even though they say, oh, you can get it for a discount. I'm like, no. No. <laughs> so that's full very price. important for me. So any process where people have not been compensated for their efforts, I think is unacceptable. Mm-hmm. But also, if um, I know of one artist who, you know, feeds their own images of their previous works into AI and it uses that as like a, um, an idea generator, mm-hmm. right? Because it's their work and it's just been, you know, transformed by AI and they're like, oh, you know what? Yeah, I'll paint that or I'll crochet that or something. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it could definitely, like, it definitely has a lot of potential. But I also think that, um, like, to use the examples even of um, self-checkouts, it's like, I think every one of those machines should be taxed like it's an employee because it is doing a job. Yeah. (laughs) And that money should, instead of, like, paying a person and, you know, giving them, like, workplace benefits and things like that, now you have this machine to do it. It should be a tool to make human beings' lives easier. Yeah. I think that should be the point, right? Like. Mm -hmm. And it's not. Yeah. It's just not. Yeah. It's not how it's being used. So it's certainly got a little bit more development, but it's something to still be kind of looked forward to almost. If it can be used in a way like, basically, I I, I can't remember who tweeted it, but someone was like, you know, um, AI making paintings and poetry and, and not replacing like, you know, drudgery tasks that human beings still have to do. That's not the future that they imagined, mm-hmm. right? It's, um, yeah, I think if it's used as a tool of, you know, not compensating human beings for their work, mm-hmm. that's that's my, and that's kind of the direction we're heading in. So, mm-hmm. um, and I don't think like, that's certainly not the fault of AI. It doesn't mean that AI is a bad idea. Mm-hmm. It's just the way things are, currently set up yeah so well on a lighter note i'm really looking forward to seeing exactly why exactly we brought you here and (laughs) not uh and not just all of a sudden brought a bunch of ais and shown off what we could have done i'm very excited to delve right into the process and to kind of get into the workshop for the Mm -hmm. most part as well too um beck is going to be joining us shortly here behind so i i think we're pretty much done this interrogation yeah um and ready to jump right back into it so i'm clark He's Perry. We got Melissa Fry here. You're going to be joining us here again shortly, where we will be delving into uh, galaxy painting, which mm-hmm. I don't know. You'll be fine. Okay, thank you. You'll be fine. Windy City's finest, <laughs> folks. Um, join us again here shortly. We'll see you then. It's Clark, Clark and Perry on the case. Da-na-na-na. Clark and Perry do what it takes. Da-na-na-na. Clark and Perry investigate. The activities and interests of local artists in the Windy City's finest throughout both Lethbridge and Medicine Hat, Alberta. Available on Telus, Optic TV, On Demand, Vidflex, YouTube, and more for a limited time only. Terms and conditions apply. Da-na-na-na.